Hi, this is Tanya from Lovely Greens, and uh, I'm a gardening and beauty DIY blogger over on lovelygreens.com. And this is my second ever uh, tutorial that I've given on Facebook Live. Now the first one, there's a link in the description, it's um, how to make handmade soap, natural handmade soap. And this time we're doing something a little bit different, and something that's a lot easier than making handmade soap as well. And what we're going to be making is uh, handmade tea light candles, and we're going to be using essential oils. So I've got my setup here, and I'm sitting down, so hopefully you can see everything in front of me. And uh, just going through the materials first. So I have uh, soy wax, which comes in flakes. It's here in a pan. Essential oils, so we're going to be using citronella and lavender essential oils. Now, the reason that we're using these is that these tea lights are going to be great for using at outdoor events. So, barbecues, camping, um, just sitting out and trying to enjoy the garden. Uh, the reason that they're used outside is that they help to repel insects. So, whether you have mosquitoes or midges or horseflies or anything like that, just light up a few candles and it kind of creates like a bubble around each candle. So, fantastic. So, as far as other materials, you also need tea light cups. So they look like these. Uh, I also have a larger one to show you. So they come in different sizes. This is probably more the standard size, but we're gonna be using these ones. They're a little bit more shallow. And tea lights, when you make them, they have probably the, a burn time of between four to six hours, depending on uh, how large they are. So put that down. And you'll also need to have pre-wicked tabs. Now you can get the wick, like raw wick, and the tabs at the, at the bottom and put them together yourself. But I really recommend, let's see if I can bring this a little bit closer. I really rec recommend that you get them um, pre-wicked or pre-tabbed because it just saves a lot of time. Right. Also need an adhesive. So I'm using which, what's called white tack or it's sometimes uh, called blue tack, it will be blue obviously um, with that color, but you can use stickers or another adhesive and all that is used for, oops, is actually attaching these uh, wicks to the little cups. I'm also using this, it's just a mini muffin tin and it's really just for stabilization. Right, so, oh, can't forget these. So some of the other materials that you'll need or equipment, digital thermometer, some eyedroppers, and this is for the essential oil. Mine are a bit stained, but it's great because I know which one is which. Um, and a pair of ordinary scissors. And a, a bamboo skewer for stirring. Right, so the first step is actually melting the wax. Now you can do this in the microwave. You've got to keep a really close eye on it. But what I'm gonna do is I've got a pan here filled with hot water, which I'm gonna turn down slightly, and I'm just gonna melt it in here. It's, this is called a double boiler method. And the reason that you do this is that it distributes the heat a little bit better around that pan. You don't want the, the wax to get super hot. Um, we really just want it to get to the point where it's just melted. And, and my gosh, it's, it's melting really quickly. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that and give it, give it a good stir. Um, soy wax has a melting point, depending on which type you have, it's uh, between 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not very hot at all. And I guess while we're waiting for that, I want to talk to you a little bit about wicks. So candle making is very easy, but the more complicated part of it is actually choosing the right materials. So there's different types of wax. There's beeswax, there's soy wax, there's a traditional paraffin wax, which is not a natural wax. Um, so choosing which one of those you want. Also choosing the diameter, so how big around your container is gonna be is another factor, and then also the wick. So depending on, on the diameter of a container and the wax inside, your wick's gonna be different. So the wick that we're using, this is specifically for tea lights, and it will have a radius, a burn pool, about that big around. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of a mistake that um, someone else, I, I was given this candle and I do love it. The only thing um, 
that is the problem is that the wick that was used to make it was actually one for a tea light. And you can see here all of that extra wax around the sides there. It's just tunneled straight through and that's such a waste, isn't it? So when you're choosing, if you, if you oh, there might be random cats that jumped around, sorry. <laughs> um, so when you're choosing the wick for your candles, uh, just make sure that it has, it's specifically for that particular wax and also that it has the proper burn radius. And the link that's in the description for this video will actually tell you which ones that I've used for this tutorial. So some other wick that can be used. So this is, this is pre-tabbed, as I described before. It's got the tab on and everything. This is, this is the wick that I use for my own candles, if I can find the end. Um, so I make candles and other beauty products here on the Isle of Man. And I actually get raw wick, and this is cotton wick. And then I um, dip it into, uh, well, I soak it in wax and I tab it all myself. It's fine. It's wonderful to do that. You know exactly where it's all coming from, but it does take a lot of time. You can get natural wick that is already waxed and ready to go as well. It just needs to be tabbed. This is actually hemp. And I, I ordered this from the States and it's already been dipped into beeswax and it's, it's wonderful. But you see how fine it is, this would actually be uh, a wick that would be um, for kind of like tall skinny uh, candles or maybe little tiny tea lights. It's actually, yeah, it's thinner than, than this wick. So there's lots of choices out there. So just starting with instructions and kind of a candle making recipe that's tried and tested and um, starting from there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you to succeed in making proper candles that everyone's going to be happy with, including yourself. Right, so let's go back to this. It's getting to the point where it's almost melted. And I'll tell you what, I'll probably take it off the heat now, I'll show you. So, well, can you see it? All right, sloshing around a bit. I'm just gonna put it here on this pot holder that I have, and I'm just gonna stir it until it's melted. We don't need it to be any hotter than that. I'll get this steaming pot away. Quite warm in here. Oh, let's see here. I can see I can see some text from here, but it's uh, it's hard for me to read too much. I'll try to answer any questions or comments that I miss at the end as well. Right. So this is pretty much melted. So we've got to take its temperature. So with soy wax, you want the wax to be about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have everything in Celsius as well um, on my blog. And I'm just going to take the temperature here just to see what it is. So 120 degrees to put the fragrance or the essential oils in. And then you want to pour it at 100 degrees, so a little bit cooler. If you don't, if, you, if you're a little bit impatient and you pour it, when it's a little bit too hot, it'll cause some bubbling and some distortions on the surface, and it doesn't look very nice, so just try to be as patient as you can. Right, this is really warm, so I'm just gonna stir it. Try to bring it down. So, most candles are actually made with fragrance oil rather than essential oils, and that's because of the throw. And if you've ever seen that in candle making tutorials or guides, um, all that means is that it's how much the candle smells. You can smell it while it's burning. It has a throw. And soy wax is, doesn't have as big a throw as paraffin. So a lot of the candles that you'll smell in shops and whatnot that'll smell amazing and, and maybe sometimes overpowering, they'll be made with paraffin. And soy wax is a lot softer. I actually prefer it. It's just a softer, more subtle smell, and it just softly kind of uh, perfumes a room. And fragrance oils also, which are not 100% natural, they have a better throw than essential oils. And so when you're making candles with essential oils, you have to use quite a bit more. Now, when you're using fragrance oils, you can use between 6 and 8% of your recipe. So that's you take the, the weight of your soy wax, and so it's six to eight percent of that is how much um, fragrance will go in. 
And with essential oils, you'll use between 8 and 10%, sometimes up to 15%. It depends on the soy wax that you're using because some soy wax can only hold so much fragrance before it starts kind of beading up. You don't want any moisture or beads of essential oil or fragrance on your candles either. I've got some very mischievous cats running around here. I have to leave the door open, otherwise the Wi-Fi doesn't work. This could be mayhem. <laughs> right, let me take the, the temperature again. So... Let's see here, it's 107. This thermometer takes ages, but it's, you really, when you're making handmade soap and candles, you really do need to use digital thermometers, digital scales, things like that, just to make sure that everything is accurate. Oh, hello, Nadia. <laughs> right, this needs to cool down just a little bit more. Are there any questions so far on candle making? Has anyone made candles before? I'm curious. Another thing that you can do with candles is color them. And most of the colors are actually, they're not natural, but you can get, they're, they're basically like chips of crayons. And I, I imagine you could probably use crayons as well to, to, to color uh, candles. I'm sure that's been done. I'm sure that's been done. But soy wax, um, and especially the soy wax that I use, if you put too much color into it, it causes what's called frosting. And it looks, it looks exactly like it says. It looks like there's frost on the surface of the candle, which isn't a big deal, but if you're gonna spend the time to color your, your uh, candles, then um, you, know, you want them to look nice anyway, right? So if you do use little chips of color, oh, this has gone down. If you do wanna use little chips of color, then just use a little tiny bit, and you can get that from candle making supply shops. Right, so now it's time to put in the essential oils. And we're gonna put in a total of seven milliliters into this. So I used this earlier to make some demo ones. So let's do the citronella first. Now you can use complete citronella for outdoor candles, but other essential oils will repel insects as well. And I really like the, the combination of citrusy and, um, and floral lavender. It smells really nice. So that was three. We'll do four milliliters of the citronella and three of the lavender. Okay, set that aside. Oh, there it is, right in front of me. As I said, here's a cat. <laughs> Can you see her? Chibis, say hello. Chibis had a little bit of a health scare recently, but as you can see, she's got a big puppy tail. She's been running around being crazy. She's, she's totally fine now. So that's two milliliters of the lavender, so one more. There we go, so that's all in. Oh, it smells so good. I love working with essential oils. Let's set that aside. Now we've got to give this a really good stir. So at least 30 seconds. So we're stirring it. Someone's timing me, someone's timing me. I see some comments. What do you use to keep your wick in place? Mine seems to dislodge whatever. Well, we're going to do that next, and it depends entirely on how big your container is. And I find with my larger candles, one of the best ways to do it is, first of all, I stick the tab down on the inside of the container using the white tack or the blue tack. And then I use uh, wooden chopsticks, you know, the kind that you get from a Chinese restaurant. I put that on top of the container and then I feed the, the wick through and it holds it in place. Now, from candle making supply shops, you can get special uh, centerers, so it centers the wick over the container, but they're really expensive and, I don't know, kind of silly, actually, in my mind, because you can kind of eyeball it, it's fine. Unless you're making candles on an industrial scale and you can't actually give the attention to each one, I think just using a, a chopstick. 
So the ones you know that they have got two pieces and they're still uh, kind of attached, so there's that tension, they, they hang on to it. Let's see here. Hello, hello Shauna. All right, so we've got to let this cool. So it was 120 degrees Fahrenheit when I stirred that in. So I'm just going to set this aside to cool a little bit more. And the next step is actually um, sticking the tabs inside the uh, tea light cups. Now, when you get the pre-tabbed ones, the wick is really kind of, it's stiff. It's going to stay in place. So this might answer your question as well. Oftentimes when you get them pre-done for you, um, they will stay vertical. If they don't, if they start drooping over, you can just push them back into, into place. Right. So this recipe, this is, this is half of the recipe that I have on my blog. And with this tea light cup size, it makes eight. So I've got to get these sorted. So everything in here. And all I do is I use a little bit of this kind of sticky white tack stuff. You can see. And you can use stickers. You could use a hot glue gun. You could use anything else that's sticky. And you just put it on the, the bottom of your tab. And tea light cups have a very handy centering thing in the center. So you can see exactly where you need to stick them. Easy peasy. So we're just going to stick that in there. And I'm just going to pop it into my mini muffin tin. This is, this is totally optional, having this mini muffin tin. But as you can see, it holds the tea light really well. So it doesn't move around. It doesn't jostle at all. And that can be that can be a, a problem with um, making tea lights is that they're, they're so tiny and fragile, you know, and you could accidentally knock them and then you have soy wax everywhere. <laughs> right. So let's do the rest of these. Are there any more questions? Let's see here. Yeah, I think I, I must I must have missed some before, but as I said, I'll go back and uh, answer those after the video is over. So, I don't know if you can tell, if you were watching my last live video, it was really dark outside, and that was three weeks ago, so daylight savings time is two weeks later here than it is in the US. Um, and also, it's we're so far north that it actually starts getting lighter really quickly this time of the year, and by midsummer, it'll be light until 10, 11 o'clock at night, which is great. We have the reverse in the winter time. It's also, a lot of people have a bank holiday today. So today is a, a public holiday for Easter. Isn't that great? I think those of you watching from the States are pro would probably be a little bit jealous to know that there's a four day weekend. So people get Friday and Monday off, which is nice. What's out there, chibis? A these cats are just so curious. Here she comes. Right, so that's five done. A few more, and I, I hope by the time I've got these sorted that the wax will be ready to pour. This is so easy. Candle making is so easy. Um, once you have a good recipe, um, a good supplier, you can make candles to your heart. It's, it's actually quite addicting to make them because Everyone loves candles. You give them away and it's more incentive to uh, make some more for yourself. Oops. Right. Getting there. One more to go after this. So you can see that they're staying very vertical. Right. One more to go. Let's set that aside. Hmm. Okay, let's check the temperature of the soy wax. I imagine that it's getting there. If your soy wax starts to cloud over, it's starting to uh, solidify in the pan. Mine isn't right now, but I can tell that it's getting a bit cooler. And um, you definitely need it liquid when you pour it into containers. 98, 99. 99.7, 100. I think that we might be just about perfect. How's that for timing? It's uh, 
Well, it might go up to 101. It's, it's a, about a, a hundred, probably in reverse for you. So it's, it's about a hundred right now. And so here's the fun part. Can you see everything? Let me move this a little bit closer. So also when you are melting your soy wax, if you have a little spout, like a little tiny saucepan that has a spout, perfect because it'll come in handy for pouring. And I'm just gonna stand up right now because it'll just be easier for me. And you just literally pour it in all the way up to the top or as far as you can. Three. Smells so nice. I can't wait for it to warm up and for us to get midges so that I have an excuse to use these. Great. All right, I'll set that aside. So, yeah, you can see a couple of the wicks are kind of moving over slightly. And with these, they're great. You just kind of move them with your finger, make them go straight back up again, and they'll be fine. Now I'm gonna gently move this aside because right now, at this stage, you have to wait a full hour before you can touch them again. And during that time, they will completely solidify. And at the end, you cut the wicks off, and then you can use them right away. And I've got, some examples here of ones I made earlier. So they solidify into white tea lights. We haven't put any colors in. Do you cure your candles like you do soap? No, you don't have to. I mean, you, it's recommended that you cure them for a full day beforehand just to let the, it's kind of like when you, when you make a casserole or a stew or something and the flavors just all enhance over, over a day or so. Um, with candles, it's a, it's said that it's the same, that the scent becomes a little bit more pervasive. But to be honest, these smell great even just after an hour. And I made these earlier. Well, I don't have one to, that um, I can cut the, the wick on. I cut them all in my haste. But I'll show you how to cut it. You just literally, with this one, it doesn't have anything inside. I'm just fudging it. Um, with this one, you just use ordinary scissors. Oh my gosh, went right into the, into the tea light. And you just trim it like that. It's no big deal. We're gonna fish that out with chopstick. It's all right. <laughs> okay, so the fun part. Tea lights, when you light them, um, they'll get hot around the edges. You should keep them away from flammable things. We're all adults here, no curtains or fancy table decorations right next to the open flame. Um, this is this is a great solution, especially for outdoors. Something like this that you can put your tea light into, and it'll also stop the the wind from blowing it out. So after an hour, we've got tea lights. You can light them. Get a little bit closer to the camera. What do you think? Fantastic, huh? Jeanette says, I go through a lot of tea lights. Do you find it more cost effective to make your own? Um, yes, but you do have to buy in bulk, um, usually. So the links that I have on the blog post, it's enough material to make a hundred tea lights. So if you were going to make some, I would recommend ordering maybe with a friend because, you know, 50 tea lights is probably enough, or you've just, make loads and give them away to friends. All right, so I'm just gonna pop this in here. Pop the lid on. That's lovely. Isn't this nice? Can you see it burning in there? Oh yes, that's gorgeous. It's amazing, it's just you had a few ingredients to start with and by the end you've got tea lights. So let's see if there's any any other questions? Just got on, so I'll have a review from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. So this video, once it's finished, you can watch it to your heart's content. It'll be available on my page in the videos tab. So you can go back um, to it if you want to refer to any of the steps. And also, while you're there, there's also my soap making video, and the link is in the description as well. So that was my first Facebook Live tutorial. I imagine, I can't see how long this video is, but um, the first one was about 40 minutes. 
I think this one must be shorter, but it goes through how to make handmade peppermint soap from scratch, which is great. Let's see here. I can't, I don't know if I can actually scroll through any of these comments. Oh, oh, let's see here. Oops, touching things I shouldn't. Simple from the hobby store, someone said. This is moving around. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, check out further information over on my blog and um, let me know what you think. Um, I want to do more of these Facebook Lives showing how to do things and uh, let me know if you'd like to learn anything, anything in particular. Um, I'm happy to, to share my knowledge with you. So thanks so much for tuning in on your Friday evening and uh, catch you soon over on my Facebook page. See you later.